The NFL is a limited resource environment, so finding value is critically important. So which teams found the best value contracts in free agency? We're going to explore that today on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. You are locked on NFL scouting with the Draft Dude, your daily podcast for NFL and college football scouting. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's better than this? It's guys being dudes here on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. We're the Draft Dudes. I'm Joe Marino from Locked On Bills. He's Kyle Krabs from Locked On Dolphins. And we are your NFL experts here with you daily to talk team building across the league on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast with the Draft Dudes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Want to issue a big thank you, shout out, and welcome to our everydayers. Those of you who make Locked On NFL Scouting your first listen every single day, we appreciate y'all being here very, very much. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Joe, we are doing best value contracts in the first wave of free agency, and the intrigue here is we each came with six names, and we don't know what six names the other person brought to the table. We do know each one of us has a big value contract, which we'll start with. But you were asking me in the pre-show, how many overlap? Do do we think we'll hit double-digit unique names on the value signings that we have that we're bringing to the table? I reluctantly say yes. You seem to think it's going to be a shoe-in for more versatility and that we might get 12 names out of 12. I think we're going to have less overlap than you think we're going to. Okay. Well, let's find out. Let's Shall get we? Started. Your best big value contract that you have from free agency in 2024 is whomst? Patrick Queen. Okay. I have Patrick Queen, 24 years old, signing three years, $41 million with the Pittsburgh Steelers, that winds up being 13.6 APY. And the conversations we had about Patrick Queen and estimating that contract was higher than that. We thought, I don't I don't want to say we. All right, that's not fair to lump you in. I thought he would push for like $18 million a season based on his youth, based on his athleticism, and how important this role has become in the NFL. And what we saw Tremaine Evans get last off season. So I thought there would be something similar for him. He comes in about $5 million under the projection feels a big need for Pittsburgh, who they've had a lot of hardship at the linebacker position throughout the years. I thought this was for a big contract, my favorite value. Okay. So, uh, that's a good start for us not having overlap because I do not have Patrick queen on my list. All right. Okay. Uh, my big money contract that I think is a good value uh, is none other than Michael and Wayne, offensive lineman for the new England Patriots. He's played guard. He's played tackle playing guard. What this year was not prohibitive to players getting $20 million or more per season. Robert Hunt, Landon Dickerson got 20 plus million dollars per season. Michael and Wayne, to play right tackle signs a three-year contract worth $57 million, an average of $19 million per. When you contrast that with a salary cap of what, 252? Is that correct? That's 255.4. 255.4. Okay. So 19 divided by 255. Jawan Taylor signed a right tackle contract <laughs> last offseason. <laughs> Kyle coming in with Jawan Taylor. With right. nearly 9% of the A the AAV of that contract was 9% of that year's salary cap. Michael and Wayne use 19 to play right tackle for the Chief or for the Patriots, and he's it's apparently going to play tackle, is a full percent and a half lower average on the AAV of that contract. So seven and a half percent of the salary cap versus effectively 9% of the salary cap for Jawan Taylor a year prior in a season in which everybody spent everything on offensive linemen. Robert Hunt got $100 million. Landon Dickerson got a supersized contract extension. We see 
Damien, I thought Dam- thought for sure Damien Lewis would be an amazing ad for a team in free agency for like $8 million per. He got 13. Kevin Dotson got 17. Jonah Jackson got 16. We're spending these on guards that are guard exclusive, and you got a guard tackle player for a percent and a half less against salary cap than what Jawan Taylor got last year for a better player. It's a good value. I'm sorry. It's big money, but it's good value. I have good news and bad news. Okay. The good news is that I don't have Michael and Wayne you on my list, so there's no overlap. The bad news right. is after that moment, I feel silly for not having Michael and Wayne you. Good. That was, that was that was the goal because I knew that'd be a hot take. Hey, nineteen million dollar year player, yeah, is is a good value. But when you said it, I was like, all right, Kyle, what do you got here? What do you what are you going to say that's going to convince me that this is a player you should have? I thought you had a a heck of an argument there. All right, um, this is sort of a big ticket player for me. Um, I think it's my okay. This is my highest APY left. So okay, there's that. Okay, Kendall Fuller. With the Miami Dolphins, two years, fifteen million dollars, seven and a half million dollars AAV. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I understand it a lot for Miami. That's a heck of a contract, a heck of a deal for a guy that I think is an outstanding starter. Is he an elite corner? No, he's not Jair Alexander, but boy, oh boy, is he a guy that you can depend on. I think that's what he's proven throughout his career, throughout multiple schemes. He can be a very, very stable, quality starter for your football team. And I think for Miami to get him at a seven and a half million AAV makes a lot of sense for Miami. I'm surprised there wasn't more out there for Kendall Fuller, to be honest with you, especially given there wasn't like a robust situation with the corners that were available on the market. So I think that's a heck of a value um, for Miami to get Fuller as they transition away from Xavier and Howard. They, of course, want to be more. Uh, multiple with Jalen Ramsey and the roles that he can fill. I think having a guy like Kendall Fuller that you can trust doing a variety of things allows you to open that up for Jalen Ramsey. I think this is an outstanding contract. Um, and um, I, I mean, I don't know if Kendall Fuller is going to be on your list or not, but I he, this is probably my number one. Like, I know that we started with our biggest contract, right? Like dollars wise, this is my favorite overall value so far of free agency. Well, I also have Kendall Fuller. So we, let's finish segment one. That'll be two players a piece, which will keep us on schedule. But let, like, let's ask the question: Was was this the cost of being the first of like the higher level corners to sign? When you consider it was Snead got franchise tagged, Kenny Moore's a nickel. Yeah, it was like Stephon Gilmore, Xavier Howard, Kendall Fuller. Is that probably the consensus top three corners that were available? I I would think so. I, Howard hasn't signed. Correct. Gilmore hasn't signed unless correct. I'm just sleeping under a rock. Oh, correct. And then Trey oh. White gets cut and he gets eight and a half. Right. The guy hasn't the guy hasn't been consistent in three years. It hasn't been available for the last two. Dude, make it make sense. He's 29. Same as Kendall Fuller. Right, and Fuller played like a thousand snaps the last two seasons. Very durable player, and has more. I I think has has more. He's got quicker feet. I think he's got inside outside flexibility, which I don't know that I would say for Trey White. No, not at all. It's it's a fact that the Trey White contract is a different conversation altogether. But even even the max value, like the first reported value of the Fuller contract. Was twenty? I, Wasn't it two years twenty or two years eighteen? I think it was like two eighteen. I was in, I was over the moon with it then, and then it came in at fifteen. I I think I texted you. I was like, "What?" Or was it sixteen and a half? What dude? Might have been, it was like it was the max value when they tried to milk it and first report it for as much money as it could possibly be was still a low dollar amount. So is that? I'm just curious. Is that the the cost of? And he didn't have his best season last season, right? But that Washington defense was a train wreck. And it felt like everybody paid the price for it. When you see Cam Curl gets four and a half, I don't know if he's on your list. So I don't know if that's a spoiler. No, I didn't want to be slandered by you for having it. So I, I'm well, I certainly didn't have him on my list because I think that was appropriate value for Cam Curl. Uh, but uh, that, <laughs> there's that, the spike of the ball we all knew was coming that, at some point. That defense felt like everybody was just disjointed out there. 
whether it was Rivera or Del Rio calling plays, they they just didn't have it last year. And sometimes that happens. I don't know. I think I think Kendall Fuller was still really good. Most of my Washington watching was like earlier in the season, so I don't know if things got different down the stretch, but I thought watching him in the Buffalo game, preparing for the Buffalo game, I was really good. So, yeah. All right. We got a bunch more to get to. Uh, four more players each, potentially eight new players to discuss, so be sure to stick with us. Folks, you shouldn't have to worry when you're looking to buy tickets for your next big event. Well, you don't have to because game time is here for you, and it's the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. They have killer deals on last-minute tickets, all-in prices, views from your seat, and a best price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. The app is awesome, easy to navigate. They give you flash deals, and I love this. When you buy a ticket from game time, they send it straight to your phone so you don't have to dig through emails to find it. So check it out. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On. That's L O C K E D O N for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I guess I should start since you gave two, and I followed serve on one of the two. Yeah. Um, my next contract is uh, at another position where there have been or entering into free agency. There was a lot of options available. And I think that certainly did not help the market um, explode as far as what, what players got. But I have Drew Tranquil with the Chiefs on this list at three years, 19 at $6.3 million AAV. He obviously resigns with the Chiefs but was an expiring contract that comes back and he stacks behind players like TJ Edwards, who signed a deal last year with the Chicago bears. It's the second of their linebacker signings got six and a half Bobby Wagner this year got six and a half uh, Juwan Brent Bentley and Jermaine Pratt previous contracts that were given at six and a quarter Jerome Baker signed in Seattle this year for seven. You got Caden Ellis signed last year with the Falcons for over seven. Blake Cashman goes to the Vikings for seven and a half this year. I think Drew Tranquil is a better player. You can keep going up the board. You know, Jordan Brooks, uh, CJ Mosley, if you want to count him with his restructured contract. Uh, Zaire Franklin signs a contract extension in this cycle. Aziz Alshahir got 13, 11.3. You mentioned Patrick Queen. And meanwhile, little old Drew Tranquil is down here, played great football for the Chiefs last year. Signs for barely over six. And I think is, especially again, when you contrast it with the $30 million growth in the salary cap, TJ Edwards at 6.5 per on 224 versus Drew Tranquil at 6.3, less money for 255 salary cap. It's another good value contract. Good call out. He was on my short list. Didn't make it though. I have other players, but okay. We were, he was close. He was probably my first off. My next guy is Kevin Zeitler with the Detroit Lions. One year, $6 million. And you talked a lot about it already in the opening segment about where the guard money is going. And 20, we have, we have four $20 million a year guards right now. And even like pretty good guards are getting north of 15. Kevin Zeitler, yeah, he's 34 years old. But sign me up for a one-year $6 million of Kevin Zeitler over the Ben Powers contract from last year. Mm -hmm. Like, e even what Detroit did in saying, yeah, Jonah Jackson, like, you're good, but we'll go ahead and pay a third of that to Kevin Zeitler, and we'll sign DJ Reader. You know what I mean? Like, it's just... Right. You have Part to look at it. A lot of money. Yeah. So there's not a long-term value of Kevin Zeitler, but he's been as stable as they come at the guard position, still playing at a high level. They I think Pro Bowl last year, isn't that crazy? Yeah. feels like he's been like a staple quality right. starter for like 10 years. That's absolutely insane to me. I love this move. Sign me up for that over so many of the other guard contracts that we've seen handed out over the last couple of years. So I'm glad you mentioned, the reader component of that decision. And that's not really 
the objective of today's show. We got a little bit of time, so why not? Um, one of the things that I've been talking about on Locked on Dolphins recently is people want to talk about team building decisions through the lens of player skill and cost. But nobody really talks about the third dimension of that, which is opportunity cost, right? Like, what does that mean for what else can be done? Mm -hmm. Owners meetings were this past week. Somebody asked uh, Mike McDaniel, why didn't you, you know, if, if the Raiders were willing to pay Christian Wilkins $27 million per season, why didn't you just franchise tag him for 21 and keep him? That's good value. It's like, well, the non-negotiable element of the franchise tag that you can't finesse Miami's entire free agent class, their salary cap hits this year is like $30 million versus two thirds of that would have been Christian Wilkins alone. Yeah. So in a vacuum, yes, that would be good value to franchise tag Christian Wilkins. And it's obviously a dolphin specific example, but it's the one that I used on the show that kind of brought me to this three dimensional plane that you have to look through every decision be it free agency or the draft. I think that's very pertinent to remember with the draft when you're making decisions on what you do with your first round pick, what you do to trade out of a pick. It's it's the domino effect that follows that teams are trying to anticipate for that if you keep that in mind, it probably paints a little bit of a different picture about what they're doing versus just, oh, they did this thing. I like this thing or I don't like this thing. Would you rather have Kevin Zeitler? And DJ Reader or just Jonah Jackson? I'm picking the second one every time. Would you rather have just Christian Wilkins or no Christian Wilkins, but Kendall Fuller and Jordan Brooks and Aaron Brewer? Aaron Brewer, like that. You know, the you can Jack give me the Barrett. Jack Barrett, Jordan Poyer, Jordan Poyer, and go down the list. Whatever other guys they Johnny brought. Smith, Johnny, yeah, right, right, like the it's, whole thing. It's the it's the whole list. Yeah, it's not basketball. It's not. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, 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 right. You got a lot more spots to fill than fourteen, and really only what eight of them play. Mean, right. meaningful minutes. Right. Um, my next name is Andre James with the Raiders, and again, this goes back to guard money. If you had to put on the list positional value on offensive line positions. <laughs> how would you val how would you stack the five spots in order of like traditional positional value, the impact that they have on the performance of the unit? Left tackle, center, right tackle, left guard, right guard. Okay. So you put center at two. I, yeah. I think if you wanted to make the argument that both tackle spots go one and two and sure. then center's three because it's in the middle and it's a coordinated position, I'd hear you out. It's it's either two or three on the list. Right. And it's getting half the money of the guards. Why? Because they don't have to handle three techniques, one-on-one -on -one in pass protection? Is that the only reason? I think like you can't do six-man protections or, or turn the center and give help to a guard in protection? As long as you have backs or tight ends that are somewhat competent in pass protection and, and are capable of helping? So he signs for three years, $24 million in a same free agent class that has Tyler Beata signed for three mm. years for 30. Yeah. He's a better player than Beata. What, like what, what is happening? Yeah. <laughs> what yeah is that's a good happening? call out. It's a good call out. Um, he signs for $1 million more per season than Aaron Brewer signs with the, the dolphins for. And I think Brewer's a really exciting scheme fit for Miami at center. This was the first year that Brewer had played center for more than just a handful of games since like, I think he said like his sophomore year uh, high school or something like that. I think his skill set's best suited for center. Mm -hmm. You tran correlate what, what Connor Williams did transitioning to center in that offense versus what Brewer can do. Uh, I, I think it's a good scheme fit, but it's only a million dollars more for, for Andre James, who's a proven center with some of that athleticism, a bigger frame, a better anchor. And it's two thirds the cost to what Lloyd Cushenberry got in free agency for the Titans. Now, had James chosen to hit the open market and not re-sign with the Raiders, I think he probably gets north of $10 million per. But that's a test. I don't think it's a coincidence that two of my three names that I, I've gone over thus far, or I guess two of my four with Fuller, comes down to if you can proactively get a contract done 
before the open market and you're not bidding against a third of the league for these, these players, it probably helps you find good value with expiring contracts. Oh, by the way, Nevada, Florida, no state income tax. So the deals incentive, as well, right? Little extra right so that's got, it's got to be such a huge part of that sales pitch. Oh, are you kidding me? I'd be talking about that like crazy. Yeah. All right. I got to get one more in here. Is that where we're at? Yeah. Sneak one in. Jeremy Chin, uh, 26 years old, signing with the Washington Commanders one year, $4.1 million. Uh, the first two seasons of Jeremy Chin's career, I thought he was on track to be like uh, one of the elite safeties in the game. And then you know, Jairo Averro kind of comes to Carolina, maybe not as good of a fit with what he wants to do. Uh, you're also mindful of some injuries that Chin has had. But for a Washington team that is resetting a lot, I mean, their roster transition is probably going to be the most drastic of any team in the league with Dan Quinn taking over and seeing a very clear fit for Jeremy Chin to play that Marquise Bell role. Mm -hmm. uh, and probably a lot better than Marquise Bell played it. Uh, I think that's a good move for Chin to maximize what he brings to the table in the NFL. I think it's a, a nice roll of the dice for a Washington team that had all the cap space in the world to be able to still get some value here at a one-year $4 million. Let's see if this can work as this chess piece for our defense. So I, I think Chin maybe wouldn't didn't have as many opportunities because of, I think, him being more of a hybrid player, which actually, if teams would maybe adapt more of that, I think – they can find value, but there's a clear path here uh, for a young player that I think has shown us that he can play some good football and is in a role where he can really unlock that with Dan Quinn in Washington. All right. We got more players coming right. up. We'll see about the overlap. So be sure to stick with us. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing with America's number one sports book because right now new customers get $200 in bonus bets. If your first $5 bet wins, it's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Did you do the honors for segment three? I, you know what? My mind is very much on uh, the college basketball tournament, which I really don't care about. But this, if I'm understanding correctly, I think the Sweet 16 starts tonight, right? I believe or today. So. I believe so. And that's a big deal because you have to keep in mind where I live, North Carolina. We got North Carolina plays, Duke plays, and NC State. How many Carolina teams Three advance? Times. Alabama, North Carolina. Al Al North, North Carolina's going to win that game. Duke and Houston? Houston's good at basketball? They're that's a one seed. Team. They're a one seed. I probably go with Houston then. Go with the one seed, and, having not watched a single minute yeah, of college no, basketball minute. all season. Yeah, and then NC State and Marquette. That's a two versus eleven. Marquette's the eleven. No, or NC State's the eleven. And NC State's the eleven. I think they came out of nowhere and won the ACC tournament. Give so me that. The magic. That would be the magic upset. You think two out of three Carolina teams yeah. advance? I mean, give me two out of three. All right. Well, if you feel that way, you should head on over to. Uh, FanDuel and check out the uh, the money line and just get in on me, the action. I'm just, let, don't don't give, do me how Reese Davis did. Aaron, Katie, Katie, Dole. yeah, yeah. We're not we're not getting <laughs> that. We're not getting that. <laughs> All right, uh, my first year risk. <laughs> do you want I'll, to do the honors? Or do you want me to do the honors? I'll go first. Um, okay. You gave love to a New England Patriot. Resigning, I'll give love to another one. Josh Uche, 25 years old, signing for one year's one year's look at me, one year, three million dollars. And you know, with the uh, reports out there that he turned down like gave up 10 million dollars, 10 million a year. I mean, that's a heck of a value. I just really like Josh Uche. I know that he's got limitations against the run, but as like a, a pure pass rush specialist, guy that had 11 and a half sacks two years ago, um, I think he's got a lot in terms of burst and flexibility. And New England knows him. He knows New England. You know, I know Belichick's not there, but that defense is kind of still the same. I feel like this could wind up being an impact player for them in that type of role where, I mean, we saw guys with less sack production in their career than Uche had two years ago signed for double this money. Right. So I think it's a good value to bring back and. I'm sure Uche is looking to parlay that into 
some massive money, even though he turned down some pretty good money reportedly. Apparently. Yeah. Uche did not make my list. All right. Uh, we're going to read some names to you. Okay. Okay. Uh, Antoine Winfield Jr. Heard Franchise tag, $17 million yeah. per season. Xavier McKinney signs with the Packers for 16 and three quarters million dollars. I know where this is headed. Kyle right. Duggar's on the transition tag for $13.8 million. Grant Delpit signs a contract extension this offseason, three years, $36 million, $12 million per season. Grant Delpit signed a $12 million per season contract extension. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chauncey Garner Johnson, three years, twenty-seven million with the Eagles. Kevin Byard, two years, fifteen with the Bears. Darnell Savage signs a three-year, twenty-one and three-quarter million dollars deal with the Jaguars. Uh, Geno Stone, two years, fourteen million dollars, seven million dollars per season. Brandon Jones, three years, twenty million dollars for some reason with the Broncos. Uh, you could keep going down this list. You get to a Lowy Gilman at five, good season. Good value, but not the one I want to highlight. Then you get into like this this trio. You mentioned Jeremy Chin at four point one. Cameron Curl, we mentioned two years. All jokes aside, two years, nine millions, good value for a player that that has his experience. Uh, Jordan Whitehead signs for two years, nine million with the Bucks. I think that's a good value, but not the one that, that I'm going to outline here. Deshaun Elliott signed a two year, six million dollar contract with the Pittsburgh Steelers. For $3 million per season, coming off a year in Miami, in which I thought he was, from wire to wire, the best safety. And J- Javon Holland missed half the season, so that's part of, of that declaration. But he was comfortably a better player than Brandon Jones was, who gets more than two times the money and an extra year on the contract from the Broncos. Now. I went down the full list to fully quantify that it wasn't just a Brandon Jones contract versus a Deshaun Elliott contract. He got 33% less than Jordan Whitehead did. And I think he was a more consistent player than Jordan Whitehead was this past year. Jordan Whitehead had what? Three picks in in week one. Shout out. I I forgot about that. I forgot all about the game, right? But like (laughs) he had this crazy like game to start the season. Okay, so you look at his raw numbers for the year. He's like, oh, he had four picks. He, he got good ball production. He had three in one game. <laughs> you look at the entire body work for the season. Elliott was a really good player, like a solid starter for Miami. And he signs in Pittsburgh for three percent. He signs for one quarter of what Grant Delpit signed with with the Browns on a contract extension. Hard to get better value than that. So that's Pittsburgh getting two guys that make our list here Indeed. yeah good good for them positions of need linebacker and safety for them uh, elliot probably helps with fitzpatrick and being able to play him deeper right like that's what i would want to do with fitz but maybe people disagree elliot's kind of like a really good tackler can play a really good tackler yeah, yeah he doesn't have the range that make it does he doesn't have the ball skills that make it does or the the but they complement each other well. so they, yeah. they should complement each other quite well yeah my last guy Devin Duvernay, 26 years really? old. Sign- yeah, dude, I love this. I love this move. He goes to Jacksonville. Two years, eight and a half million dollars. Now he's an all pro return guy, which matters a whole lot right now, now with this new NFL, bro. Like this kickoff stuff is really a big deal. Like, probably and credit to my brother Frank who who sent this to me in a text message, and I agree with him. Probably the most drastic like rule change that I've ever seen. Um, in my life of following football, we are going to see returns. It, it's going to happen. And would you rather just give give teams the ball in the thirty though? If Devin Duvernay's back there, I probably think about that. Right there, like there's a few teams who, depending on who they can put back there, you just you just get take the L and say, yeah, take Miami. I'm not dealing with any of that. I'll tell you, <laughs> you kidding me? I don't need to deal with those players kick returns. Yeah, I I probably take give Miami here's a thirty. But if you're Miami, you're like. Wow, if we can start out to 30, um, that's probably pretty good too. So there's some trade off there. But Devin Duvernay as as that, I think he's a really reliable punt returner. And it's it's hard to find guys that can do both. I, I think there's a lot of assumption out there that kick returners can also be punt returners. They're very different skill sets. I think Duvernay is one of those rare guys that can do both. And then, you know, they Jacksonville's had this Jamal Agnew type player who obviously they're they're not gonna have him anymore with Duvernay back, but they can kind of get some of that gadgety stuff as well with him. I just feel like there's so many different ways that Duvernay can help Jacksonville 
especially with this new return stuff. Um, at 26 years old, uh, I think he's got even more ceiling at receiver than he was able to showcase kind of towards throughout his entire career at Baltimore. So I, I just – I think he's going to be a really dynamic weapon for them. I do not have Devin DuVernay down, but I like the sales pitch quite a bit. So we go 11 of 12. We have one overlap, right? Kendall Fuller is the only overlap. Correct. Yeah. 11 of 12 being different. It's a point I'm making. The uniqueness. Yeah. So good show, man. Did you get two in the last segment? Am I dreaming? And I was sitting here wondering if you you had just cut me shut me down because we went over the 30 minute mark and Ross no, was gonna get no. mad at us or what? Yeah, get Ross can chill. <laughs> My last player is George Fant signing in Seattle for four and a half million dollars. George continues to play football and play meaningful snaps. He played 80% of the snaps last year, and he signs a two-year contract for nine million dollars as a swing tackle in Seattle and the offensive tackle market, I would have thought the scarcity that existed when it's Donovan Smith and it's Kendall Lamb and it's Mackay Becton and Tyron Smith gets a deal up to $20 million max value on a contract. I thought for sure, look, this guy continues to play meaningful snaps. He's a solid player. He can play both sides of the line. There's going to be some kind of value or some kind of going to be some kind of big value for him because of the scarcity of the rest of the tackles that are available. You could sign him and feel like he could start for you. And Seattle signs him as, as insurance yeah, and peace of mind it. for their tackle yep. situation. Um, but I, I think a really good illustration of the value is based off what George Fant did this past season playing for Houston, right? And, and playing 80% of the snaps. His valuation on over the cap was nearly $9 million just for last season. He signed the contract, a two-year deal worth $9 million. I think that's a good value at offensive line where there are an offensive tackle where there was not a lot of options that you feel really felt like could step in and be a starter for you. It's a good call. Out. I want, I thought the Jets should have thought about bringing him back. So, right. So there's your 12th. Thanks for not running me off the, the podium. I never intended it of doing that. I was like, why are you angling <laughs> towards ending the show? I want to hear your other player. <laughs> That's going to do it for us here on Locked On NFL Scouting. I'm Kyle Krabs. He's Joe Marino. I'm Kyle Krabs. You can find us on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Make it a great rest of your day. We will be back again tomorrow. Talk to you all again soon.